going to be give, re-giving the lectures that I gave yesterday on the 21st of January for the 152-142 Intro to Java Programming class, where we're going to go over some programs. But um, be before I do, I, let me just tell you that I didn't tape yesterday because I had problems with the sound. I'm still having problems with the sound, but yesterday I had no sound. And today I have sound, but it sounds a little tinny. Okay? I didn't mention this in the last class. I have to do this, though, now, because otherwise I'll forget to do it. And that is uh, out on the P drive for both classes that first-year people have with me. So both the 152-142 class and the 152-143 class. So in other words, C-sharp and Java. If you go out to the P drive for the classes and you go under the homework folder, those are the assignments right there for the C-sharp class. Okay, notice there, there, nothing's been assigned yet. And for the other class, for the one that we're in right now, the 143 class, that's also out there. All right, and as we assign things and they have due dates, I'll let you know what those are. So hopefully that's a good start at least. Okay. The other thing I want to mention to you too, that everything that I'm about to do right now, everything is already out there on the P drive. As I just showed you, but it's on the P drive in the in-class folder for the 143 class. So it's here. So all the stuff I did is shown right here. And while we're doing that, I might as well just show you real quickly. You may or may not be aware of this. There is an online free Java tutorial that's out there. Oops. It's literally out there right here. HTTP colon slash slash docs.oracle.com slash Java SE for standard edition slash tutorial. And literally it's an online resource. You go, well, that's not very big. No, no. Here's the table of contents. So you can see. It really is pretty big. And it's got virtually everything that you'd want to do. You probably would want to start it from close to the beginning. So I did yesterday a closer look at a Hello World app. And you'll notice as you get down to the bottom, you can go to the next, and you can go backwards, etc. All right? It's free. It's just another resource if you choose to make use of it. So I'm going to start up Eclipse. Sorry, I should have done this previously, but no, no biggie. I handed out hard copies yesterday of this, and again, it's also out there on the system. If you weren't in class and need a hard copy, it's your responsibility to come and talk to me about it. So I created them originally as MPG, MPG2, and MPG3. All right. So I'm going to redo them, but I'm going to redo them as Miles, um, Miles, oops, Miles, Miles2, and Miles3. And actually, they'll be four of them. So let me just grab this. This was our starting point. I'll copy that. I'm going to close this. Remember how we start this out every time. Okay, we do a file, new, Java project. That creates our project. So this will be just called Miles. Miles 1, 2, 3, and 4, and again, I will save them, even though they're out there basically already anyway. So there's Miles 1, and it creates a source folder for us and some Java archive files, and I'm going to right mouse click on that thing that says SRC and choose new, and go down to package. And there it says it's going to be in my Miles 1 source, which is what I want. You use reverse domain notation. Since I'm J. Scott at blackhawk.edu, you don't use the at sign, but I use edu.blackhawk.jscott. I click Finish. Now my package is created. I right mouse click on the package, go to New again, and go to Class, 
and I'm going to call this one just Miles. In fact, I'm going to call it a PG because I'm copying all that code in anyway. I can. I'm going to overwrite the code that's in there. So if I want to, I can check this. Right? But all that code that's in there right now, I don't need it anymore. Okay, so I've gotten rid of it. And I'm going to paste in the old code. This is the stuff we did as a class previously. If I don't want to read the comments anymore, I can click up here. Okay, and I can close that. But what we talked about last time was this is a simple miles per gallon formula where we're inputting miles driven and gallons used dividing miles driven by gallons used to get our miles per gallon. Later we'll come in and we'll add this optional stuff, so I'm going to hold off on that for just a minute. When we set up the package, that was my package, edu.blackhawk.jscott, so boom, we had that. All right. In order to be able to use our option pane stuff, so when we run this, in order to be able to run it and have this box come up here, whoops, let me set it first, in order to have the box come up that says, Enter your miles driven. All right. That, which is from what's here, I need the Java, I need to import the jobx.swing.j option pane. But notice if I come through here and put in negative 33, it takes it for gallons used, negative 234. Boom. And it gives me that stuff. Since it divides a negative by a negative, it gives me a positive. But the point is, it gives me a lot of stuff I really don't want to have in here. We'll fix that in a bit. Public, this is called an access modifier. It means it is a public class. It can be used by other people. After public, all Java programs must have, all Java files must have a public class. The name that you use must be the same name and the same case in this which you save it. All right? For the beginning, the, the programs we're going to do in the first chapter or two um, will have just a main. So there's our access specifier. Static means there's just one of them only be one main. It doesn't return anything, so it's void of a return type. All right. The uh, name of the method is main, and if we do want to pass arguments in, they're passed in as a string array called args. Don't worry about it because we're not going to do that. All right. So we've got three double variables in here. They're double because they can essentially have a decimal place in them. They're miles, gallons, and mpg. Notice up here, I said miles driven. You can't have a blank space like this in your uh, variable names. And variable names should always start with a lowercase letter. This input, when you use those, when you use these, all right, so let me just put it here, that input right there. All right, when we use these and we input something, we input them into an option dialog. And that's automatically a string. Well, we want to take that string and convert it into a number. So we use input as the string, and then we run what's called a wrapper function, double dot parse double. Very similar, those of you who were in the uh, JavaScript class last semester is using parse double in Java, JavaScript. Right? Notice, though, right now that if I run this, if I run it, and I leave it blank, it just gives me error messages. It gives me what's called a number format exception. It says I put an empty string in there, and it tried to convert an empty string over to a number, and it didn't know how. We'll fix that in the next iteration. So we read in the miles driven. We read in the gallons used. We divide one by the other, and then we output the results. We went over this already, so th I think that's about all we need to say about that. All right? OK, so let me copy this. All right, and I'm going to close this. I should say. This will be miles 2. Finish. Here's my miles 2. Right mouse click on source. New package. edu.jscott.blackhawk. Again, I can have the same name because they're in different folders. say MPG again. And just to show you I don't need that main in here, I'm just going to remove it so I don't get the main stuff. Oops. And I'm going to paste that in. So that's the same program that we had in here before, the one I just showed you. Instead of edu.jscott.blackhawk, I wanted edu.blackhawk.jscott. 
the same program we had before. Now I'm going to add a comment here that says define program variables. Right? And I'm going to add another comment here that says define program constants. And I'm going to put those constants in right now. When you use constants in JavaScript, you use the word final. Okay? And these will all be doubles. And typically your constants are going to be in uppercase. say here max minim minimum let's just cheat again here so maximum so that's minimum the yellow thing here because it tells me I've got constants that I'm not currently using. Okay. Now, I mentioned this in class yesterday and I'm going to say it again. That is, if you remember, if you've ever heard the old saying of priming a pump, so you might have to prime it a few times before it, this is called a priming read. This is attempting to read my first record. And when I read it, I don't know if that record, if it's going to be correct or incorrect. One thing I should have done last time, just to make it a little easier, just to make it a little bit easier for my user is to give them some kind of visual clues as to what I want here. So please enter miles driven. So it should have been really uh, 0 through 1000. And 0 is kind of silly, but it would work. And gallons used, that should be 0 through 100. All right, just to make it a little easier. So all that changed. Right now I can run this, but just so you see it, now it says, it gives them a little visual clue here. And we'll, we're going to pretty this up in just a bit. All right, so now we have this. We'll say attempt to input valid miles driven. And then down here, this one will say attempt to validate valid gallons used. All right, but I have no guarantee that when I put that in, it's going to be correct. So what I'm going to say is this, while, in fact, uh, yeah, okay, while uh, miles is less than my minimum miles, or miles is greater than my maximum so again, what am I doing here? I'm attempting. So this is valid. Whoops. Okay. Validate miles driven. All right. So what that says is while it's out of range, so we'll say here check for out of range. Let's make it a little better comment. Check for out of range miles driven. So while it's less than zero, or it's greater than a thousand, all I'm going to do is just have them read it in again. All right, I 
could give him a clue and say, error, please input. All right, so notice what we've done right now. It may not look like much. All right, I'm going to save this. But now when I do a run run, now if I put in a negative number, it says error, please input. And if I put in a number that's greater than 1,000, 1,001, I get an error. All right, still, so I, I'm starting to do some validation. If I put in this, it still blows up down here. We're going to fix that in the next iteration. All right. So I have now gone in and fixed that. Now I've got to do the same kind of thing here. Okay. So I'm going to do the same types of stuff. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to put in a uh, comment that says, check for out of range while used. Now what I did when I showed the class, I, I came down here and copied all this stuff, which you can do. But make sure that if you copy that stuff, which is what I just did here, you change everything from miles here to gallons. All right, and you change everything up here from miles to gals. Gallons, 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 gallons. Now this is going to, I don't want to say please enter mile gallons driven. That's got to be gallons used, and that's got to be 100 gallons. So now it should be okay. So notice if I either come in and put an invalid number in here, all right, or I put it in an uh, invalid number here, an error message. But once I put in something that is valid, boom, I'm cool, so to speak. All right. So the only thing that's left in here, so we've done miles one, which was our original MPG program, and we did miles two. All right. Now we want to come in here. We want to do miles three. And what we want is we want to handle the case that when we run this and we put in something non-numeric, we don't get an error message down here as we're getting right now. We want to fix that. Okay? So I'm going to do that and run in just a second. I'm going to go back to my original. in there, copy my stuff in, and the other thing I want to do when I copy this in is I want to have those constants back up. So I'm going to have that for miles two, which I had before. So I'm going to call it that way. I'm going to remove that one, and I'm going to copy this one to here too. All right, so I've, I'm basically back. The reason I didn't copy the previous one is I, for right now at least, I, I'm going to show you this because I'm going to show you two iterations of this. And with this first iteration that you see right here, this first iteration, um, I'm not going to use any looping. But you already know this. When I try doing this, it could possibly fail. When I try doing this, it could possibly fail. As I told the class yesterday, think about this program because it's really written for getting about the comments here. 
but it's really written as a series of five steps. We define our constants in our variable, step one. We attempt to input our values, that's step two. We process our inputs, that's step three. And we produce our outputs, that's step four. I don't know if I said it was a four or five step process, but that's basically everything. Right? The only thing that could possibly fail would be either this or this. And if these two are valid, then this must be valid. So the first thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you, I, I'm not going to worry for just a second about the negative numbers, which we handled last time. I'm not going to worry about this. Okay? But what I am going to worry about is you putting in something, you or any user putting in something that's a non-numerical. So if you do, I want to handle that. And then we'll come back and we'll combine both those in the last iteration of this. And to do that in here, this is something that's not until about chapter ooh, 10, I think it is, in your book handling exceptions. So we won't cover it for quite a while, but I want to show it to you. All right? So I want to grab this stuff that we put in here in this input. I want to paste that in there. Now I'm getting an error here because if you have a try, you need to have either a catch afterwards or what's called a finally statement. So remember this? Number format exception. You might be able to see that down here. So that's how I'm going to put it in here. Number format exception. That's what I want to catch. I'm just, i got to give it a name, so I'm going to call it NFE for number format exception. And if that happens, I'm going to print down here. I'm going to say system.out.println and I'm going to say attempt to input non-number. Alright? And then another system.out.println I'm going to say resetting miles driven to 1,000. So I'm going to force it into a valid value. And I can now say miles equals max miles. Let me put the other one in, and then we'll come back and look at, at both of them. Okay? So I want to put another, oops, another try in here. save some time, I'll copy this in and make the appropriate changes. So attempt to input non-number, resetting, this will be gallons used, and instead of a thousand, it will be to one hundred, and instead of max miles, it will be set to max gallons. Now we're going to look at every line in here in just a second, but before we do, save this and run it again. So again, this is miles 3. Now notice when I run it and I don't know. Okay? I don't get an error down here. But it says attempt to input non-number resetting miles driven to 1,000, which is what I did. Still don't know. And it says, attempting to input non-number, resetting gallons used to 100. Now, it says here you drove 100 miles, all right, miles and gallons, so maybe I didn't reset everything, and it, look, it looks like I didn't. See where it says miles? I didn't reset it. That should be gallons. All right, so let's try that again. In fact, let's, clea let's clear this. Saved, run, run. So just leave it blank. There. Attempt to input non number, resetting miles driven to zero. Leave it blank again. Attempt to input non number, resetting to 10. So notice I've now reset. So what I've shown you in, in the first one of these that we did, <coughs> in the first one of these that we did, I just showed you a simple miles per gallon problem was it allowed negative numbers and it didn't handle <coughs> non-numeric input. Then I showed you the second one that fixed the negative. It gave us some, some uh, parameters, some max minimums and maximums, but it 
still didn't handle non-numeric. Now I've shown you the third one, and that handles non-numeric, but it doesn't handle our negative numbers. So notice if I run this one now, and I put in negative 40, 55, it still takes it. Gallons used negative 33. It says you can do that. So we're going to have one more iteration of this. So I'm going to take this, copy it. Alright, I'm going to do a close all. <coughs> I'm going to close this and create one more. In other words, we'll create miles four. Alright, so file, new, Java project, miles four, finish. Alright, now let's go to Java source, new, package, edu. Scott, finish, alright now let's go to package, new, class, EPG, finish, there it is, we don't need that anymore, <coughs> <coughs> so again you all know this, when you could attempt to do this, and it could fail, alright again we could attempt to do this, but it could fail, And since we could attempt to do this, and since, <coughs> excuse me, and since it could possibly fail, we have to account for that. All right. So we what we want to do is we want to have it set up so that if you put in a negative number, or you put in a number that's higher, you know, less than our minimum, higher than our maximum, or you attempt to come in there and put in a non-numeric value, it'll handle it. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to change our try and we're going to take what's in here and we're going to put this in a loop. Now we don't want to put it into a while loop, we want to check it before we put the number in. So we're going to put it into what's called a do while loop. this in here, take this from here, put that there, but now I want to say do while, and I want to grab that while that we had before, and since I know it worked down here, I'm just going to grab that from here, <coughs> so think about what's going on here logically. What this says is attempt to do my input. After you've done your input, attempt to convert it. Okay? And do that while miles is within range. Okay, so again, let me please put the uh, put this one in here also. I'm gonna write this a little cleaner than I did last time. Move this. run it and see if we've solved at least most of our problems. So run, run. So now if we put a negative number in, okay, that handle it. If we put in something that's non-numeric, okay, it handle it. If we put a negative number in here, we're handling it. If we put something non-numeric in here, we're handling it. Right, so it appears as though everything we've got is pretty much the way it should be. The only problem is, is if we put in, if we run this, and we put in a number that's out of range, and then we put in another number that's out of range, okay, well, it looks like it's going to keep asking us, and that's good. Now let's put in, okay, maybe it does work. Okay, it looks like it's okay. The only thing that's left is this. I don't know about you, but to me that's pretty bad. 
I want this to say a thousand point point zero zero, forty four point zero zero, and twenty two point seven two or seven three. I guess if it would be uh, if it would be uh, rounded off. So in other words, I want to do a little bit of, of, of prettying up. And what I could do is I can come up here and I can imp do another import. So I want to import Java dot text dot decimal format. And hopefully you notice this. Now if I come through here and I put my mouse over here, okay, it gives me that and I'm going to fix that in just a second. So let me I'm going to add another variable here. up the helper and it tells me what java.text.decimal format is about. I'm not going to read that to you. Basically it says that we're, able, we're going to be able to go in and do rounding and we're going to be able to do formatting to make something just two decimal places. If you want more on this, and I save this out on the folder just so you know, but there's a, a pretty good article here. Simple So it explains in here the import statement you have to use. It explains how you do the formatting. We're going to get into this in a later class, but I just want to show it to you right now. All right. So the other one that's in here, just so you're aware of it, is a more complex way that you can do it using some of the Java documentation. Customizing formats. I'm not going to go through any of this right now. Okay, but we will at a later time because I should be able to go in and save this. And all right. So now when I come through here, I'm setting up a new format that says the pound sign means show me a number if there is one. If there's not one, don't show me anything. The zero say show me a number if there is one. If there isn't, put zero zero in there. So now I'm going to come back where I output in my stuff and I'm going to format all of this. So I'm going to say So I'm going to say here, for matter dot format miles. For matter dot format gallons, which we'll do in just a second. And then finally, for matter dot format MPG. So what have I done? It's easiest to show you, okay? And I'm going to just run it. I'm going to put in valid values because we've already shown that we've done it in our testing. So enter miles driven, 456. Enter gallons used, 13. So now notice we've got a lot better looking output. You drove 456.00 miles. You used 13.00 gallons. And our MPG is this god-awful number that we saw before. And if I put in, for instance, by input something like this, so if I input uh, 389.14159, kind of like pi over there, all right? And I say gallons used, 26.1415678. Notice now when it prints out, it's got it formatted to two decimal places every time. Okay, I think that's a little bit nicer. All right, you don't have to do that yet. I wouldn't be expecting you to do it. 
But now what we have in here is we've got four iterations. Miles 1, Miles 2, Miles 3, and Miles 4. So you now have four, all right? And I'll put a couple more quarters in here. Done in class. Now move in there. MPG, MPG2, MPG3, and MPG3A, because that's what they were. And then I'll put done on tape. And I'll put in there miles one, miles two, miles three. should be done with everything. That's what we did as a class week, break, of course. So it's probably, this didn't take as long. This is like the third or fourth time I've written these. All right. So again, last thing I will tell you, and I've said it before, but I'm going to say it one more time, and that is the C-sharp homework and the Java homework, not the dates they're assigned to do, but the actual homework assignments I'm going to give are now out there on the system. And I'm going to put this stuff, it's into, it's into a Blackboard, but I'm going to reset it in Blackboard where it's going to come back and it's going to send an email out to all of you. And I'll put an announcement out on Blackboard also. Okay, and that's really all I had. So, like I said, I apologize if the sound quality on this is bad. It's better than nothing, and I'm going to work to try to fix the quality as soon as I possibly can.